So, Christoph, the floor is yours. Thank you. So, yes, indeed, I'm going to talk from a slightly different perspective. So we have all gathered here with the intention of sharing our success stories, and we are all excited about the API economy. But the fact is that not everything is as spotless as we would like it to be. And actually, I would like to talk about those plots on the landscape. Uh, and well, let me allow first to introduce myself and the company because I don't think we can yet compare to the brands of my, my like say, predecessing speakers. Uh, so first of all, Intif is a company resulting from merger of three other companies and currently would be probably the largest software house uh, of the Polish origin. Yeah? Not largest in Poland because there some international brands do operate there, but we are currently running uh, a company of about 1,500 people, all, almost all of them mm, highly skilled specialists. Yeah? And we do work with some brands that are known here. Actually, not, this is not an extensive list. It's just random selection from the small to the large and provide them services uh, of different type. So augment their skills, run their projects, but also consult. And actually, I'm coming from consulting division, which is pretty fresh, and I'm sitting there banking vertical. As part of it, we have started an initiative that is to basically deliver a platform for APIs, actually open banking APIs, that would prevent the banks to getting this. Yeah? So basically, a totally congested system that is just a result of, ooh, you know, our IT can do it in five days, yeah? We can stick it here, and it will work, yeah? We know IPIs. It's not a big deal. It's not exactly true. And actually, it was underlined several times during yesterday's uh, presentations that it's not as easy as it looks like. We have a slightly different idea, basically creating it in a neighborhood. Mike actually mentioned the fact that basically if we tried to, to build it just in our core banking system, we would end up with a mess probably. And actually the typical core, uh, let's say system of systems in a bank uh, is something like several hundred interfaces. Yeah, at least. I've been actually with FIS, for example, for eight years as the integration architect. Been there, seen it. It's a nightmare. So we are saying, well, let's do it in the neighborhood, in a place we can control. We can enforce limitations the way we like. We can secure it and monitor, yeah? But we are not building a general purpose API management platform. The guys there probably can do it better, and actually that's their business, yeah? And this is something we potentially might use, but we still solve some issues that they don't, yeah? But this is not the subject of today's presentation, so just wrap it here, end of the commercial break. So let's talk about our sector responsibility, and actually, so have we screwed PSD2? I mean, I know that some of you who seen the title in the program said, well, who? Us. We are not guilty. Well, we are, or at least complicit. So let's run through the numbers. There are some 7,000 banks in Europe, around 5,000 fintech startups. I don't know how many really tech providers, but let's assume about 5,000 easily. And who knows how many uh, e-commerce merchants. All those uh, companies are actually impacted by PSD2. Yet, what was the number of responses the European Banking Authority got to their discussion papers? I I guess many of you know because some of you did submit them. And actually, I know that I'm talking to the audience uh, that actually is not representative 
because those who submitted the responses are here. But looking at it in the wider, broader scope, well, we've got 118 responses, and actually 81 only have been released. First question is, I mean, what's the percentage of people who are really impacted? We are talking about this as the disruption, yeah? As the most important regulatory change, the driver for change, uh, changes in, the, in banking, and yet so few of us actually t took time to respond, yeah? So yes, we are complicit, we as a sector. So, actually it's October 12th today. Accidentally is the date of submitting responses to the draft PSD2 RTS. Actually the RTS I think for many a bit disappointing. How many of us did really respond? I don't know, but probably some, hopefully. So let's talk about some examples of the failures that already did happen or will happen if we don't change the uh, situation. Actually, I selected them pretty randomly. This is not an extensive list of problems. Just a few of them. Those that actually impacted me as a person who is technically oriented, but I also have some comments about the impact on the business. So, First of all, uh, European Banking Authority has decided and explicitly said so, they will not create an interoperable standard. And actually, in the justification, they say, well, it's their way to allow innovation. Hmm, I cannot understand it, honestly. And what we will get, we will get fragmentation. Actually, I think one of my predecessors said it's not as important to run standard uh, based APIs. And I agree, but only partially. So as long as we are in regulatory space, we should have a standard. And what would be the impact if we don't? Well, first of all, let's go to what was said, okay? So from one perspective, they shied away from telling us exactly how, being afraid of say, limiting our options. One paragraph later, they just said, well, hmm, so you have all the options as long as it is ISO 20 or 22. Okay, that the beautiful, uh, well, you know, cutting catch standard, we all know, yeah? And I should I do it by telling this, this is what introduces ISO 20 or 22 <laughs> into the RTS. I don't get it. What does it mean, shall use? Like, okay, I can have it at the end of the message and then, and then it's okay. And actually my API goes different way. Yeah. This is not a law. This doesn't allow to create anything that would work together. Yeah. Could be just scrapped. Well, about the standard itself, we all know it's a pain. And actually the standard says so. <laughs> but okay, more seriously, it's not this kind of APIs we are used to. This is how the open bank API looks like, yeah? This is one of the many published standards, yeah? And what is common? Well, basically they're all restful and they are JSON-based, usually. What we've got, okay, we've got ISO 20 or 22. For now, no syntax specified for JSON. Might be there will be. It's, it's capable of specifying such syntax, but nobody did it. Okay, then we know that they will actually choose it. I think we did know, yeah? So, it's actually message-oriented. So I don't know actually what would be the query semantics, for example, if I wanted to get the last transactions from the account. No clue how to ask using the standard. Yeah? Okay, it's a bit technical now. And actually, technicalities are not the most important problems. So okay, 
just to wrap it, did they really have any choice? I don't think we have left them any choice. I mean, talking about standards available, how many do we have? OK, all of us have created our own standard, wannabe standard. It is now that, I don't know, initiatives like CAPS appear. Yeah? It is now that uh, projects in UK should result with a unified standard. But it's too late for them. They, sh they had to answer, and they did, based on those hundreds, some responses they received. They didn't have choice. So maybe it's not the best standard out there, but it's the only that has the scope. It's already used, okay, for SEPA payments or whatever else, yeah? So they had little choice. And that's, again, where we are complicit to not helping them. We didn't do much. OK, the other thing. So I, in the comments to one of my articles, I've got a response saying, well, you know, it's only Google, Amazon, Facebook, and the large players that would really benefit from it. The rest will need to continue as they did. Hmm. No, 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 no. They should. There is opportunity for everybody. Really? First of all, let's look at the opportunities there. If I were a merchant, I could theoretically become a payment initiation service uh, uh, provider. Yeah? This would allow me to access bank infrastructure for free. Is it really for free? First aspect was the lack of standard that we have just mentioned. There is no standard, so I'll probably need to create interfaces to 100 some banks or whatever number actually operate in my region, not even mentioning pan-European businesses. Yeah? They would just die under load. So that's one thing. So they will need to cooperate with some intermediary, yeah? a technical one. The other thing is the cost of actually being a payment initiation service provider. We don't know the full cost yet. Yeah. We don't know all the requirements. I mean, we do know, do know some of them. But there will be capital requirements, reporting requirements, all the things that those businesses are not prepared for, really. So we have created a regulatory framework that makes it easy for the big, because they already operate it. Yeah? And actually, even if they don't, they can, because they do uh, actually operate in millions of transactions. Yeah? Yeah? So the amortized cost of being the payment initiation service provider is really low for them. So Amazon, yeah, that's the example of the one that would be able to benefit because they could actually stop their commercial agreements they have now with the banks, become PISP, and do the same thing for free. But for a small uh, e-commerce shop, there is no an option. <laughs> so they will still need to pay intermediaries, and intermediaries do not work for free. Yeah? So we'll end up with something that we all heard about, yeah, for banking, but from a different perspective. <laughs> yeah, they will enter financial services because it will just pay off it to them. Yeah? Now, let's talk about a slightly different thing, security that they've named. So I think when I've heard star, uh, first heard about uh, the PSD2, I thought, oh, so I'll have this white label, great app, and I will just run all my accounts through it. Yeah? And I will pay to whoever I need to from any account I, I have. Mm, forget it. You will pay nobody as long as you will not go through the uh, strong customer authentication. Strong customer authentication is something fully controlled by your bank. And actually, what does it mean that your bank will actually 
make you use their app. Yeah? So what's the benefit of having another that you see all your accounts in, but if you, anyway, you need to go uh, to another application if you want to approve it? And actually, you will have to. I don't think many of us actually understand what does it mean independent or segregated. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Nobody, I think, knows, really. Maybe somebody who has very good access to, to EBA. Uh, but for me, the sentence saying independent segregated from the channel device or mobile application is completely incomprehensible. I mean, I always thought that the device and mobile application I'm running is the channel. Yeah. So anyway, we have just uh, made it impossible to really realize some of the opportunities. Yeah. Now, what I think will happen in two years, this, is, this will be the message from the bank. Okay, so we do have PSD2 APIs, of course. We have to. Uh, well, does anybody use it? Not really. Why? Well, we made sure of it. And how? I mean, I'm not looking from the perspective of the speakers like we've heard yesterday. Uh, I think in the last presentations, like, well, those malicious intents. Not really. Banks are just looking from a different perspective. And I think they will say, OK, those devices we have just rolled out. Well, we first of all invested in them. Yeah? Why should we change it? Second, I mean, they work well and they are secure. And we don't really know if other methods will be as secure. So, well, we have all those beautiful devices I think many of you have seen, yeah? And let's imagine we are in, I don't know, subway station, okay? So I have my phone. It should be iPhone to work, really, but, okay. yeah? Mm? I want to tap it, yeah? Mm -mm. You need to approve it. <laughs> You've got this device with you? Not really, but even if you had. One sec. Where is my card? Oh, yeah, I've got it. Got it. Stop pushing. I, I mean, I, I need to answer to the challenge. Yeah? OK. What will end, the end result be? I will just use my card. It's all about friction. And it's not if it's really so difficult, but it's about how difficult it is in comparison. Card scheme just won. I'm telling you. I don't think anybody will ever use this outside of their home. Yeah? So that's part of the problem. Now, is it really secure? I just selected one thing. So we are responding with those devices to a treat that is, I would say, not the main problem. So how many attacks, how many frauds, attempts, have been really executed using, I don't know, intercepted text messages? OK, some for sure. And we do run all those malware programs in our uh, smartphones. It is theoretically possible. But I would risk statement that the true danger is with dangerous behavior of the users. And what do we do? OK, we actually failed to name those behaviors. We were talking about screen scraping, yeah? And the companies who actually operate, legal companies operating this kind of business. And, well, what if they were wrong, yeah? Actually, in my country, the regulator ran a campaign trying to inform people that your credentials are yours. You should reveal it to nobody, unless, I don't know, they have a knife next to your, uh, let's say, head, yeah? Uh, but other than that, you should know that anybody asking you for your banking credentials is a potential fraudster. This actually had a result. I was impressed. I think it was PayPal 
a few weeks ago or maybe months ago already, that they asked, okay, can we do it Zofoad style? Okay, we can, we can actually um, get money from your account, you just give us your credentials. The funny thing is that in Poland, the response was tremendous, like, are you out of your mind? Nobody will share it. So they were successful. They were successful informing the people. But what does EPA do? It's not even mentioned. So we've spent so much time trying to respond to those technically enabled uh, treats, yeah, dangers, and failed to actually address those most dangerous. Okay, so is there any hope left? And uh, let's say summary. So it is us to align and standardize. I've mentioned caps. I don't know if it will success, uh, succeed, sorry. But maybe. The other thing, as I've said, it's October 12th. Maybe just use five minutes of your time, name your pain point, and answer. You don't need to answer to all 11 questions, maybe just one. I don't know, but it would be a miracle if it helps, honestly. I don't believe it does uh, help anything. But maybe let's start prepare for PSD3. And let's do it now, before some regulatory authority does it. <laughs> and well, the last, I think, sentence. So I do think open banking APIs will succeed. They will just not succeed because of PSD2. They will succeed despite it. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Christoph. Do we have uh, questions for Christoph? We have time for a couple questions. Okay, we have one there. Uh, hi, yeah, my name's um, David Tong. Yeah, I'm just interested, the ISO 20,022, like you say, it's mentioned in the RTS, but even in a hand-wavy kind of way, you know, if the definitions are available. Do you not think, you know, like, like you said, existing banks who have APIs aren't using those they definitions, and the standard, that standard doesn't cover the kind of three-legged authorization flows that it seems like are required. Do you not just think that actually it will be... Uh, actually, the APIs that will be produced to be compliant with PSD2 can be produced without uh, using those message definitions. Things. It's not a strict specification. It's just if available. Well, thank you for this opinion. I would say that is a subject for interpretation, and I'm for sure not a lawyer. Yeah. To uh, but let's say my understanding is that if the let's say scope of the data available. Yeah. Uh, is covered by one of those elements, we should use it, yeah? You mentioned uh, three-leg authentication. Actually, three-leg authentication is not really dependent on the protocol below. Okay, we are used to JSON web tokens and things like that, but it doesn't mean we cannot actually use another form, yeah? Because the mechanism is really agnostic of it. I mean, if your claim is expressed as piece of XML, it doesn't really matter, yeah? So, so, okay, it will be not stand out of two, maybe, if we use it for this flow, yeah? Second thing is, actually, I don't think the intention of the regulator was actually addressing the authorization flow at all. Yeah, I think they wanted to address the other flows, which is basically exchange of the actual business data, yeah? And I think that was the intention, but I do agree, if it could be any more convoluted than the way they've written it. Uh, I think I, it would take them another year to invent this method of describing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so I mean, it's it's really steganography. Like, like really, they are hiding the, the their intent in and the way they they are describing it. <laughs> uh, well, I have difficulties uh, reading it, but I'm not an English native speaker, which makes it more difficult. And actually, I'm wondering how much. Uh, how many problems will be introduced by translations. I like it, really, the way uh, it all ends up, yeah? because usually when we get any European-level uh, regulation that needs to be transposed to local law, we usually, in the local law, get something completely different. <laughs> so, so I do think 
this result is also likely here. Okay. I just had another question for you as well. Like, so we, we've went through, you know, what's not so nice about PSD2. In your opinion, what's like the great thing that PSD2 is bringing, if any? No, no, okay, the, the idea itself is bold, yeah? I think it's the first time we had the regulator acting early, yeah? I mean it. I think that the 2013, I think it was, when the initial text was proposed. 2013, we were not really uh, talking banking open APIs. So, so it's a bold idea, really. I think it encouraged us to act. We are late. And I, it's another story. I mean, the fact that we are late is something really uh, astonishing. I mean, it was always the, the industry that was before the regulator. I would say this is the other way around, or say very close to each other, yeah? Okay, we had those APIs enabled, but in different sectors, not in banking. And somebody really had, uh, let's say, sorry, to say the balls, yeah? To say, well, banks, you know, you need to follow the path that others are doing. And this is great, this is great. So I would say, that's why I said, it's not EBA who failed us, it's us. Uh, any last question for Christoph? All right, cool, well, Christoph, thanks a lot.